Hey guys, it's Tara here with American Country Essentials. Well, actually, these are my mini donkeys. The one in the front, that's Jenny, and the one in the back, that's Hee Haw. Today, I'm going to teach you how important it is to have a farrier specifically for donkeys. So we're here early this morning to uh, get our donkeys and we're going to the farrier today. Uh, so we gotta get them and we have to uh, halter them and put them in the trailer. There's several ways to halter your donkeys um, and catch them. We prefer the bribing method, it works really well. Donkeys are extremely intelligent and they have a really good memory. So they know that they see the truck and trailer, they're the only two out here. They know that they're probably going somewhere. They're even watching me right now, uh, not really wanting to do this. So uh, let's go grab them and uh, put them in the trailer. is they, they followed me into the barn and usually if you get one you'll get the other because they don't like to be separated but they're both walking away from me right now because they saw me bring out the halters so I'm gonna grab some alfalfa and put it on the ground for them and then lock the gates behind them so it's a combination of treating and baiting and sneak attack that they won't know I'm coming. This is the only time our donkeys ever get treats or alfalfa it just makes my life easier and sometimes you gotta just pick your battles. So they're both haltered so now all I have to do is bring them up to the trailer and uh, load them in. It seems easy, but sometimes they don't want to go in the trailer. So next task is to actually get them in the trailer. Come on, girls. Come on. We let them uh, just loose in here. They're safe that way. And so I'll just take off the leads and then close the door behind them. And hope they don't make a, an escape. <laughs> So they're obviously already irritated. You can hear them pawing in there trying to get at the door. They'll calm down. They're fine. Um, and so then I just lock it up. We're good to go and uh, go get their hoofs taken care of. I like getting chores done first thing in the morning, even on cold days. It's, it's a little chilly right now, but the best part is the sunrise. There's nothing like a Colorado sunrise. One of the greatest things about living out in the country is how far away we are from everybody. One of the downsides of living out in the country is how far away we are from everybody. Our farrier lives about 45 minutes away from us, so this is usually a day's trip for us. Uh, we'll go into town, get some errands done, and uh, get the donkey's feet taken care of as well. We're uh, out here with uh, Ross Keller. Uh, this is the owner and operator of Keller Equine Services. Him and his wife Kay have over 40 years uh, experience with uh, donkey and equine training and farrier. Uh, we're out here with a bunch of his donkeys and uh, I just kind of want you to introduce us to some of these guys and what do you use all of them for? Each of these donkeys is, has one or more jobs that they're really good at. Um, from, from Buster here who is a good saddle donkey. He's 15 <laughs> hands. Um, he's as big as a horse. He's as big as a horse. Guinness here knows how to drive and pack and he can carry kids. Okay. Candy is also a driving donkey, a pack donkey, and she's done burrow racing as, as, as does Guinness and and Buster. And then little Dewey there is also a pack, a pack race and driving donkey. So they all have multiple jobs. Kona is my wife's saddle donkey. She is the queen of, of packing. She takes charge of the pack string and, and, and keeps everybody safe in camp and, and just knows the best trails and the best way to go and guides the other donkeys. So. And what got you into the, the donkey business? We, uh, many years ago, we got a horse when we moved to the country and the horse needed a companion and we got candy here. And as soon as we got candy, it kind of changed my whole world. What is the biggest reason for why you need a farrier donkey or somebody that specializes in um, donkey hooves versus uh, equine? Well, your, your farrier needs to recognize that donkey feet uh, are very different from horse hooves and that the, they need to trim to the specific uh, biomechanical and anatomical characteristics of the donkey. Um, the biggest problem that I see with, with experienced farriers that have a lot of good horse experience is that they don't generally trim the donkeys to the correct angle or take enough sole and wall off. Okay. Because they're going by what they know on horses 
and the tissues are very um, different and much more robust in donkeys. Okay, and so is the um, taking care of standard donkey hooves the same as mini donkey? Yeah, they're hooves, all the same. They're the same. Yeah. Okay, so donkey's yeah. donkey. It's just a matter of size. Okay, perfect. So um, right now, let's go get our girls out, and then we'll have you work on them. Sounds good. So these girls spent the entire trip wanting to get out, and then the second I opened the door to let them out, Pihan doesn't want to move. So this can be a process. <laughs> this is what we call a donkey tantrum. She did this for probably three or four minutes before she finally jumped out, and it was very dramatic. So um, now we're headed over to the spot where Ross will work on their hooves. Um, one thing that surprises me about donkeys is how well they stand for the farrier. Uh, they might get distracted by the grass, like we, he trims right next to grass, so they might get distracted by that. But for the most part, they're really, really calm and it doesn't bother him, it doesn't hurt him. Uh, obviously, he's a professional, so um, he knows exactly what he's doing and makes sure that their comfort levels are extremely high. We've been going to Ross for about a year now. About a year ago, um, all of a sudden we started noticing that, that he huh, this donkey here, um, she started walking real slow in the pasture. And, and it's not uncommon for us to see him running around and chasing each other and things along those lines. But she started walking real slow. And it, we especially noticed it when she started making turns. Um, so, and we had her on a regular hoof care farrier with our horse care, uh, horse farrier. He'd come out every eight weeks and he'd work on the donkeys. And so hooves weren't really something that I even thought about. Um, I was actually worried about her legs, that she had something broken or sprained or something along those lines. So we took her to the vet. And um, when we took her to the vet, they actually said that her hooves looked overgrown. And again, I kind of dismissed it because she's been worked on every eight weeks. Um, but then after doing some research, I actually learned that it's really important to have somebody that specializes in donkeys versus horses. And it was no, no fault of our farrier. He just didn't know better as Ross was explaining earlier. Um, so I started doing some research and I actually found Ross and uh, called him. He knew exactly what I was talking about. Uh, said, you know, that it was really important for somebody that specializes in donkeys for her, for the, him to actually look at her. And um, her lameness started getting worse and worse. She was laying down a lot, really started concerning me. So we brought her out to Ross and um, he clipped a lot off of her. And uh, now he said, you know, she's about 80 to 90% better than what she was a year ago. She runs around now. I, I hardly see any kind of lameness when she walks or anything along those lines. So um, we learned firsthand that it was really important to have somebody that specializes in donkeys work on her, even mini donkeys, standard donkeys, same thing. So that's how we ended up um, actually being clients of uh, Ross's. So one of the things you'll see on, on um, laminated horses, donkeys and mules, is that typically the heel grows at a more at a faster rate than the toe and so you end up with a long underrun heel and, and, and in extreme cases you can even see a big dish in the dorsal wall where the hoof is starting to curl up like a little slipper. And you can see in trimming her we're looking at how high this hoof should be not so much how long it should be. And the frog grows to a certain a, a, what we call the optimum height and then past that point it degrades and that there's always a very distinct line across the frog that kind of tells you where the proper term height should be in the heel. And then we're looking for what's called functional sole or a kind of waxy sole to determine how much sole depth the animal should have and how much sole we should take away. And we want to trim off any hoof wall that extends above that level of functional sole because once the hoof wall extends past that functional sole, it's no longer supported and will tend to distort. It'll also, and that distortion in donkeys can also lead to some pretty significant separation between the hoof wall and the sole. Girl. That's one of the things about donkey feet too, is they're extremely robust. The environment they're, they're naturally adapted to is very rough terrain, so their feet are, are adapted to grow pretty vigorously to keep up with the wear from all the travel those wild donkeys would be doing on, on over rough terrain. Mm -hmm. 
This process is going to be repeated for all four hubs. I'm going to link Ross's website below in case you are in the area and you need a donkey farrier or you need to call him and have any kind of questions. Please do not attempt to do this work on your own. It is extremely important. A professional always works on any kind of hoof, whether it be horse or donkey. Due to Heha's laminitis, her appointment is significantly longer than Jenny's. So now it's Jenny's turn. She usually gets done pretty quick. So Jenny here does not have any evidence of ever having had um, laminitis, so her feet are quite typical and normal. And you can see by comparison how much less growth there is on this foot. Ross estimates that he took about a half an inch of growth off of Hee Haw, and he's only gonna have to take a quarter inch off of Jenny. So this is why it's important for them to stay on a regular schedule. And it also just goes to show you that each donkey can grow their hooves different than the next. Again, this process is repeated with all four hooves. And look at my girls just being so good and just standing there, not causing any problems or anything like that. They're so good. And look how cute they are. She loves her ears scratched. <laughs> both girls are now done. Um, both hooves look great. Now we'll schedule again for eight weeks out. That's um, what we have both of them on. Uh -huh. That seems to be working. So I want to thank Ross for giving us all of his knowledge and uh, explaining to us why it's so important to have a specialist in donkey care if you have donkeys. Now it's time for us to go home. So this is the fun part where we get to load them back in the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> As I've said before, donkeys have an incredible memory. Some people think that they're just ornery, which that can be perceived as being ornery, but it's actually that they just have this really good memory that they remember that they don't wanna go in the trailer. Like I said, our drive is about 45 minutes. Even though they're safe, they would much rather be out in the open. He's got a lot of good grass. So they don't necessarily wanna go in there. They were good this time. I think it's cause they knew they were being filmed. But then also my problem is with the trailer, I don't really know how to work the door and I always mess it up. So that can get frustrating. Okay, so we've made it home. So now um, they're ready to come out. If you can't hear them moving around. Um, so now the goal is to take off their halters before they jump out and then uh, call it a day. For the life of me, I can't seem to figure out this trailer door. I don't know what the problem is. We always take the halters off of all of our animals. None of them that are in the pasture or around the barn ever keep their halters on just for safety reasons. Come on, girls. Good girl. This was her fourth tantrum of the day. Uh, there's really nothing you can do. You just watch her. It, it's amusing. <laughs> She'll jump out in her own uh, time. I think she just didn't want to be on camera because the second Mark took the camera away, she jumped right out. But thank you so much for learning why it's so important to have a donkey farrier. Visit my website for more details on our ranch and our products. And stay tuned. My next video is all about these girls and why we actually ended up getting them. For all of your donkey needs, please contact Ross Keller at Keller Equine Services. I promise your donkeys will be in great hands. 
If you like this video and want to see more, please subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook as well. For homemade products made at this ranch, visit AmericanCountryEssentials.com, which is linked below.